The game starts long before the game starts. And warm hands are faster hands. Gain the upper hand and power up your pregame warm up with Zippo hand warmers. Welcome back, everyone, to Valorant Challengers North America. We just got to see match one of week three. Now it's time for the second match, and it's going to be Core against YFP fighting against each other. One of them trying to take the first win of the split, and the other one trying to get that second win. And over, it's been a little back and forth. We were talking about it. It's two very interesting teams in terms of... They've gotten a couple wins in a couple maps, but nothing has been convincing enough and nothing has been a, a really a point of concern for any other team. No, I think like both teams are actually really quality. I think they have excellent players. YFP, I think, has the unfolding story of Penny saying, I am a duelist. This is, I'm not, I'm not messing around anymore. I'm not going to pick up these other roles. I'm a duelist. They also got Thief coming out of that MXS team for uh, skill set issues who probably feels like he has a huge amount to prove. This mm -hmm. YFP team, of course, uh, you know, they, they go up against Thinking Men. It's pretty back and forth in that first week, but as we've seen, even the best teams can have some problems with Thinking Men. And then a very unremarkable series against Together We Are Terrific uh, last week in the regular season. Look at the side of Core. It's pretty crazy that, you know, we're, we're I mean, we'll stay on YFP for just a second, I guess, because we have a chance to expand on this. I don't mind uh, how that sort of uh, Ascent game went. It was pretty back and forth. A lot of the times as Ascent tends to be. It was really the defensive showing from Together We Are ter Terrific that, that managed to shut them down. Pancakes was everywhere and taking some really bizarre angles. Like there's the standard, oh, I'm going to go like a, into wine, like come out of A main and sort of play from here. It was really hard to keep track of. Sunset as well, like both these teams, sort of just getting you know like four rounds and four rounds and four rounds back and forth but penny has a decent showing uh and it's sort of you know jonah is also able to play he plays that breach of course on sunset shows us a little bit of action there so yeah these rosters on paper i i, I really like um you know yeah. thief obviously i think really has to step up and prove a whole lot here but you know the fact that like, neither of these two teams have really managed to hit their highs yet means that we could be in for a bit of a treat here Hmm. Yeah, I think the longer we watch this group, especially after that recent series, the more like group A is just so much more lopsided than group B is like yes. flat out. It's just up top. You've got MXS and Oxygen and somehow try the rear terrific is 2-0 and oh, and we saw a really good battle from thinking men. So it's like it feels like anyone can beat anyone in this group at the moment. And that, I think, is another testament to how competitive this entire season of Challengers North America is. Yes. But on top of that, it's one of those things that you can just not look at the record at face value and say, oh, Core's 0-2, so they're worse than YFP. Like, the strength of schedule is just so crazy considering how loaded this group has been. And the fact of the matter is, these teams have come in with some great preparation, a lot of great rehearsal, and we're seeing some cool variety to where some of the compositions work, where it catches a team off guard, and other times, eh, a little bit overcooked and it's not quite working at all so it's trying to find that balance i think and yfp has really started to show that they can handle that just comes down to making all the right pieces click at the right times i really like the creativity we, we've definitely seen it for every kind of team the, the teams that are undefeated so far and the teams that have taken a bunch of losses we've seen some sort of a, a creativity come through when it comes to the compositions, the ideas, and what they're going to be running. And now you talk about YFP. I also want to talk about Core because this is another team that has been trying different things. It has been trying to close it out, but some maps have just not gone their way. Icebox being one of them, one of the ones that we also saw most recently against Moist Shopify. It was a 2-13 loss that they took yeah. there. Yep. The most one-sided score, I believe, that we have so far. So, I mean, they got Vic down on Icebox. So, th there's not really much to say about that map. I thought that Bind was like a much more compelling match, you know, between Core and Moist X yes. Fire. Yes. It's a close game. Snarly has a fantastic game. And what they do really well is they exploit Flyer. They, early in the round, they have a lot of presence towards B main, or, or B long, rather, on the attacking side. And somehow, like, they're able to catch Flyer every single time. Whereas Moist X Shopify, as we've already seen, they prioritize showers early really hard. So we had two very different attacking styles on that map. Uh, but like I really enjoyed watching, uh, yes, Nali and Nerve. And again, like the the Astra on bind is a little bit of a variation that we don't always see. And you've got like a you know, very deep roster on this team. Like I really think there's Eldris, like when I watch him play Breeze, for example, he, he doesn't stop. Like he generally just runs around <laughs> the entire map. Like his entry is so confident. If you can unlock that for Zeldris here and going up against a player like Penny, that is something that is in some degree of dispute. 
you have a really strong showing. Like, we've seen Core, they obviously haven't managed to win a series yet. I think this is the game where, like, everyone is sitting up and paying attention. It's, this is their chance to prove they are the real deal. Exactly. Th this match, I know these are not the two teams that people talk about the most when it comes to challenges, but this match really matters to both of them. Yes. One, uh, to not be, uh, to to get the first win, to not be 0-3, like we saw Thinking Men do today, and on the other side, to get the, the second win and to, to start getting on top of that board because things get difficult, but it's going to also depend on how that map select is going to go. So let's take a look at the maps and what teams decided to go with. We've seen quite a lot for both of them, but it, Uber, it's gonna be Ascent, Sunset, Lotus, and once again, give me give me your initial thoughts on this. So I really expected Bind to make it through. I expected Bind and Lotus actually to, to feature here pretty heavily. We haven't seen Core play Sunset yet in, in challenges, whereas we, like, you know, I thought YFP had a you know, pretty lively back and forth with Together We Are Terrific on that particular map. Ascent is, you know, not gonna show us anything surprising, I think, so. Um, you know, Breeze getting banned against Core is a good idea. If you watched uh, sort of the qualifiers, I think, I, I want to say it was Core versus Winthrop um, or something like that. And like, yeah, they looked incredibly good on, on Breeze in general. So both these teams looking pretty close. YFP banning out a map that they themselves look quite good on means that they, they were a little bit uncertain about how they match up into Core on that map. So Ascent, Sunset, Lotus. The only map that I'm a little surprised about is, yeah, is to see the Sunset here uh, and Core picking it. We haven't seen it from them yet in challenges, and I don't want to look back too far, uh, too much further than that right now. Yeah, it was a staple of their qualifier run, but that was nearly two months ago, and a lot yeah. has changed since that point. So it's one of those situations that, like, yeah, I think the biggest thing is no matter what maps we got, uh, this is a must-win series for both these two teams because at the moment, it looks like the top three are going to be pretty heavy set just based on their current records, which means that the teams that find themselves bottom three, these two, and Thinking Men, every match versus one another is a critical one to keep you away from possible tiebreaker scenarios. So this is going to be a good one. I thought this was going to go three. I had a hard time picking between YFP and Core. I wanted to look into like maybe the map set goes this way, maybe it goes that way, but I think flat out, whoever performs today is going to win. That's my John Madden comment today. Whoever plays better is going to win. <laughs> Another great analysis on the I desk. I got away Thank from Matt Morello, Chip. but here we are. Someone just filling his shoes so well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult match, I think, to predict just the way that we've seen it. I think people are most likely going to go the, the side of YFP knowing that they, they took that, that first win, then they struggled, but it has not been consistent. And as Matt was saying in the interview, and as we've talked about as well, you never really know, what, and, and, and anybody can win. Winthrop did it last weekend when nobody expected them to do so. And, and Thinking Man had a really good chance today. So really, anything can, can go down. But it is not going to be easy for both of them. Talking about the maps, me personally, I'm a little sad because I wanted to see the Reyna. These are the only two teams that have played Reyna in, in different scenarios. And Uber, I know you're like, what are you talking about? But me, I love Reyna. I love I, Reyna. Look, I honestly, know it's a little silly. I like but... it on Icebox, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it is really, especially on the A site, it's very good. Reyna on Bind as your solo duelist is... Think it's, is, yeah. it's great. It's, it's a amazing. Thing. Yeah. It's okay. creative. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very based. I'll say that much. Uh, I, I, I don't know like how much further I would, would sort of comment on it here, but um, you know, we have to, you gotta bear in mind, YFP have not played against like the Austins and the MXSs of this group. So, you know, we use that as a measure, a benchmark for core. We don't know how YFP sort of match up against those teams yet here. So, and they're at one on one, like they got that game against Thinking Men. Remember, just don't be six in your group to avoid relegation, right? That's all. You get yourself in the mid-season cup by being first through fifth, right? That's really at this point what you want to do, establish a foothold here so you can have the environment to improve and grow as a roster. Just get a couple wins. Just get a couple wins, take it step at, one step at a time. And also it's something that every team grows and, and adapts in a different way, right? There's some teams that recently just in the middle of we the first week and they made some changes. There's some that have been screaming for a month, two months, even longer. There's all kind of scenarios, but everybody has that chance to, to get their win to, to it showed improvement, which we've seen on this third week and already on this third week already, we, we've seen what, what teams have been doing. And Shift, I want to ask you for that last match on, on Breeds, for example, you talked about how some of these maps can really depend on the on the duelist and, and the, the jet diff or whatever. Do you think that's going to be the same case for this match? 
I think if we were to see it, it'd be right here in map number one. Just get the Ascent Jet v. Jet battle that we often assume that's going to happen. Uh, that would be where it would happen if it were to go anywhere, because I don't see that happening on Sunset. And if we get to the third, I think that's another one that's just going to be the macro team versus the macro team. Not as much relying on just one particular person, which, to be fair, both those teams are, I'm sure, going to prefer that, especially considering some of the heavyweighted duelists that we have in this particular crew. The only member of our talent team that actually predicted Core to win this game was Seaside. All of us yeah, had yeah. YFP winning this game, which is okay. interesting again because we haven't paired them up against the MXSs and auctions of this group. But looking back on that, I yeah, I'm, I'm happy to double down on that. I think Core are a really quality team, but they just haven't been able to put it together. They do this weird stuff. Like every time there's pistols in their hands, I, I worry because they are very, very good <laughs> on those rounds. Like we mentioned, like I, I mentioned T Dog all the time, but like some of that stuff is a little unreasonable. And like a really powerful duelist in Zeldris, if they can get them online. So. They have the parts, they have the elements here. Um, how do they deal with like a pretty well drilled and pretty consistent YFP team? That's what we're going to find out as we get to jump into the agent select. Again, the core, they have not played Ascend on week one or week two of challengers, but we do expect to see the same composition. As always, the standard Ascend composition to be played out. And ship, this is the one that you talked about. Might depend on the Jet v Jet duel, Penny and Seldris. Let's find out if that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and I think in particular, you think to Penny over the course of their career and they have had opportunities to just be like that one guy like he is him it just comes down to will they be able to find that same kind of success because i do look at this core team as a more complete overall squad obviously with the recent kind of moves that yfp have been forced to make that that kind of forces that conversation to touch but i don't know we'll see I i'm i'm excited to see what penny brings to the table but we know what we get from core we know what we get from these compositions i think this is just little legitimately who whatever team executes off the game plan and the mid-round adjustments better is just gonna flat out win today whether that's three or two i don't know but this is a flat up i think there's like paper thin margins between them yes i and also like we saw penny on this map he did quite well i was minus two on first kill first death though up against the will on together we are terrific who was very public about the fact that he was still adjusting still you know getting integrated into yeah, that core yeah. So that's also, you know, not a great way for us to really take the temperature of, of Penny on, on this sort of map, for example. Um, Thief is one to watch. Uh, oh, okay, interesting here. This is, we have a little bit of a, a role mix up. So Bones was actually playing the Omen for YFP last time around. Thief has actually moved onto the controller role here. Jonas, what? Wait, is that? Yeah, Jonas 6 is now on yep. KJ? Yep. Yeah, they're mixing it up. Yeah, yeah. And I think this has to be some sort of a byproduct of the recent roster move, right? Like, just get people to where they're most comfortable. I mean, it's... We'll see. And that's what's going to be, like, the big question mark about this YFP team is can they get all of the little things ironed out, which is, largely speaking, kind of the story for all of the teams that find themselves below kind of the halfway point in their group at this point. I mean, Group B is going to be excited to watch tomorrow because all those teams are one and one, and a lot of the issues that every single one of those teams has is being able to kind of complete some of the mistakes as we get the quick flash and dash in. But oh, YFP down, pretty prepared B. for it. Two for two, the opening exchange. That's enough to get the spike planted, though. No one wants to pull out here and just keep an eye on a potential flank. He's going to get some action. This thief is trending over there right now. And again, don't have any of this U-tool left for the post plant, whereas Bone still has a flash up. There's a paranoia as well. The so core cool have to have their wits about them here. Thief eventually gets the better of nerve. He was three HP. How much he could have done about that anyway. That was the flash from Bones. Paranoia for Thief could be backbreaking now as Penny will be held at bay by the Nano Swarm. Oh, this is a cheeky push through for Starly though. But losing the gunfight. That pretty much puts the round out of contention, you'd think. Ziff, wait, okay. <laughs> for a moment, had a chance at it, but yeah, the, the Killjoy Nano Swarm being pushed and then all of a sudden you get the push through on the other side. Definitely the right idea from the side of core on that very tricky post plan after losing B main, but not able to make the most of it. Let's Again, yeah, they, they, they sort of wanted a physic there. He was able to find two or three, yeah, two kills to sat inside the switch house. It's not an angle they check, I think, is Penny, or rather Zeldris, dove into the cloud burst and didn't check the left-hand side. Yeah. As if here getting close. And is your pistol out of the way here? And YFP, got to be feeling good. Want to settle into a, a very prosperous defensive half if they possibly can. And they are just going to have this, this KJ Sova very standard set up towards B now. They're going to get busy in a few moments. Shock Dart just a little long. 
but the turret being placed early creates an opportunity to you to just flood through. Don't worry about B main as much. And yeah, that's really well done by Zeldris. Just falls right into the mix. And somehow, thanks to the little bit of support from Snarling over the top with his flash, it just completely distracts YFP. And yeah, now you can just use this Killjoy turret as kind of like a sixth man over towards B main. Everyone else can focus on market. Zeldris is so flashy. Genuinely, yeah. like when he when I watch this guy in the recite, there was like, I mean, he it just emanates confidence there. Drops down, twinkle toes, 180 kill, finds the second with that stinger on the side. Now Zeldris is in a great spot to pinch the Underworld's bones. They got to respect Speedway. Zeldris, a casual, lazy 4K <laughs> in his any flaws. Very, yeah. Uh, lazy is one way of putting it. Maybe just a little bit easier than you would have anticipated. Just over the top of the boathouse, straight on into the mix, where you can see like everyone's just so focused on the counter flash, plus the extra utility behind it. And then after that, it's just all action. So, okay. Anti-Eco win here for Core with a little force buy into the Stinger. It's all that's needed. And now Shu's on the opposite foot and YFP kind of have to make a gamble stack. And that looks like they're going to lean over towards B with just the killjoy of Jonah 6 playing by the Lonesa. You can get live info off your recon here if everyone's going to play out in the open on this B side. Benny also trying to dissuade this pressure. They're going to go for it. Flash in Zeldris again. Confident as you like. Penny getting off Speedway only barely with the tailwind. Cloudburst sat here upstairs, but Zeldris was there. Penny receives him with a headshot, though. This is getting a little bit messy now. Bones receives Snarly. Three versus three here, and Zip wants to slow it down a little bit, but Jonah in CT, in the smoke, able to take a, a right click, rather. And a 2v2 now as the spike is being ferried out of here. Yeah, Jonah doesn't just get the kill, he also collects onto a SMG, but Ziff gets the perfect read on the Aldrone timing and just pushes right through for the freebie. So that evens things, or actually opens things up now for Core. Spike is not here as a part of this play as of yet, and that's got Jonah 6 kind of second guessing for maybe an A play, but this will be a B plant, don't be deterred by that. And Jonah 6 will just have to work his magic in the 1v2 with their Suspector available, and not a lot of info towards where this setup is going to be in particular. That alarm bot is particularly stressful. Spike planted. Spotted out here by the turret. Cats out of the bag now for Jonah. Yeah. That's rude. That's also rude. Plenty of <laughs> util being expended here, of course, just to make sure that Jonah can't pull the wool over their eyes. We'll be walking into a double face at some point there as it cleans up the round and core. Yeah, I mean, catching, I guess, like out of the outro. You know, Physic got caught. That could have gone very differently, but clever play. Just push past the Aldra and he catches sober before he can recover. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations that's like you create a mess and then you clean up around and through it. That's it's hard to like get a read on it. It's just simply put another one of those moments that as you start to see core start to get aggressive, YFP just don't have a chance to rotate over with the numbers they need to deal with it. It's just all this flood has worked out really nicely in these last two rounds for core, and there's no signs of slowing it down, at least not voluntarily. Jonah will move and kind of invest a lot of resource towards the front doors at B main, but as the turret gets deleted, now it's just again, here's the flash, here's the scene, and then Zeldris just runs right back in, but Jonah 6 well reinforces the site, and Core now are a little bit stuck over towards B main. Great counter reveal from Physic. That's huge. Jonah now knows they're going to be swinging his way, but they can't really help much from CT. Bones able to find one with the spam through, and he invested in an operator here, but can't be posted up on a good angle. Does know the zip is around that corner. Here. Well, the shots confirm it. Zip is low enough that Warbang would claim this, but spending that shot and missing could be catastrophic. Physic will help out to mm -hmm. that effect. You've got the player deep on the on the boathouse here at B. This is compromising for core. And Physic just needs to stay alive right here. He's got health nearby. You just need to keep your life. Oh, T Dog may get caught pulling utilities. Same thing you said for Physic, though. A little exchange happens over towards the pillars, and that's enough now for all of a sudden the offense ended. to make their move in. But T Dog spike doesn't quite feet. get back through the sidewalk, and as a spike is dropped, now they know that Nerve is also left. stuck on site. So just hold your angles. Don't get doubled up. Don't get collided, and it should be a win, and so it will be. Good discipline play for YFP to, uh, just defensively to kind of get a read on what has gone wrong to this point. Jonah 6. Not going to get fooled three times. Just backs up, waits for the push, collects. t Dog though, had the right idea. He keeps two YFP players locked inside CT. There is a smoke there, of course, thrown down by Nerve, but they kind of know that T-Dog's waiting on the other side. With the Spectre, so still relatively lethal, this leaves Physic stranded inside Boathouse, who eventually has to take the challenge when he gets pushed. Yeah. YFP able to recover, though. Bit of a bounce back now, and they keep that operator in the game. 
And this is where mid map becomes a bit of an issue. And we'll have to really kind of keep an eye on what Core want to do once they get a read that this operator's in play of how do we want to try to contest this mid map without giving anything away for free, in particular lives. You just don't want to drop to first blood by it. But at the same rate, now that we start to get into gun rounds, you can't just let mid stay open either, because then defensively it just becomes too easy to work your way around the map. And you can see that already starting to persist. You've got a player deep in towards wine for Thief. You've got a player on the corner just to make sure this Aldrin doesn't scout him out, plus the fragment to create extra space. And if YFP want to stick, they can. Otherwise, you can just safely back onto the site and they'll choose the ladder. Thief wasn't spotted by the Aldrin, oh, no, so there's no util instantly. Not. And he sneaks back across in the opening. Wow. Oh, they're still checking wine. Dude. This is beautiful because you sneak, you don't get spotted by the Aldrone and you've drawn out a Hunter's Fury. T Dog, probably feeling a bit sheepish after that. I'd say. I mean, that is just the on. definition of cause and effect, right? Like, there is a choice. YFP could have chose to stay there if they wanted to and whine, but the separation provided by Bones playing forward at the A main tunnel instead of playing here a tree because of Penny Zop allows them an exit. So now Penny's going to get tested. He's usually good for these. Flash comes out, but. No Not able to quite burst away, and Zeldris once again comes away first blood, and the attack is on. Aranoi on Zeldris to Bones, capitalizing, able to swing and find the one. Taken down by Snarly's Molly, and Zeldris is all the way up to Jen. T-Dog holds his ground there, sat on side. He was carrying the spike as well. And I guess there's a conversation about, like, Penny holding that angle with the Operator. You are giving up mid, but you still want to try and hold some of those ingress points with an off. That's a tight angle, and one flash puts you off of it. It was almost one and done. Yeah, it almost was. And it's one of those situations that how different things could have been with just one shot landing. But the focus for Core, which looked to be a bit of miss with the Hunter's Fury, like you appropriately called, was like, uh oh, that's a huge resource expended. But the good utility of the basic utility focus over to Clear Tree works out beautifully for them to isolate and take Penny out of the picture, who now is just on a stinger. Maybe looking for enough clearance to grab this orb, but it's just simply put not there. At least not at the moment. So knives will be unavailable for the time being. They flash the bejesus out of that turret. That's a moral victory of anything. Four things about walking up here. From the shadows, at the ready. T-Dog just going to make sure that orb is taken. Looks like zero point spotted at least. The Sova out. Possibly the KO as well. So three players for IFP embedded here on the A side. Reluctant to be moving away. There's going to be no cat pressure here from Core. It's all they made. Yeah, and the thing is, the null command is going to allow them a little bit of an easier entryway. Don't have to worry about the utility, but why appear position perfectly for this, except for Jonah Six, who does get red and caught bottom side of this banister at bridge. So the reveal will only provide some information and a nice idea from Thief trying to catch timing, but. Again, with the weapons that are in hand for YFP, Core should be pretty comfortable holding this post plan. Yeah, not much to be done here. Hunter's Fury likely to be kept in the quiver. And of course, the Nana Swarm is going to make it much harder to make some action happen here via Heaven. Try and force Core to part with some guns here would be the order of the day. Penny obviously playing some long angles there with only a stinger, so I'm likely to find much joy there. Core stacking them up pretty well. And again, this one was yeah. really behind the, the combo of the, the Omen TP into sight, plus the Null Command to shut down any of that util. T-Dog wants a bit more. He's hungry. Take one, and Bones will be brought to heal. Yep. It's just perfect execution off the Null Command, knowing you've got an advantage already in the weapons. So let's just put hit it, hit the trigger, make sure no incoming utility stalls us out whatsoever. We just hit this with numbers, which has been kind of the moniker for all of the offensive wins for Core to this point, right? I mean, it's just been flat out five man hits. Not a lot of cutesiness going on through mid at all to this point. And depending on how this round goes right here, if YFP can get a read and say that, wait a second, they're not looking at mid at all. They could really use that as a position of power to try to separate this core offense a touch at the get-go and force them to have to spend utility in different ways. It just comes down to will they get that read and Penny will for sure move forward with the help of the recon dart to confirm that. Yep, and the aggression through mid is going to pan out for first blood. I like this a lot. You know there's not a lot of presence top mid for the attackers. You make a tiles crunch happen here. You make the trade in the end. But look at all this space you've now created. Zeldris has to play from virtually spawn. Whoa. Still wins it out because he's kind of clean with it. And now you can drift back in the B direction. The tiles crunch, maybe you just overheated a little bit on. Be happy yeah, enough I, with taking like that, that B lobby space, right? Yep. I think Bones in particular is for sure an example of that. I can understand that you probably get a call out from your teammate that, oh, he's been tagged. He's low. You're looking for the red dot chase. But 
I, I just don't think it's necessary once you've got that mid control under your wing. Three. So now Thief has to play an off angle, hope he can double down. Not going to worry out, work out at all. Physic holding the front line for now, but he's been battled back against, and that dark cover will allow entry for Core onto the B site. Physic gets blown over by a strong wind at 26 HP. In no position to do anything about this. I have Jonah wrapping around here. Lockdown, of course. Off the table. And is he trying to back up here? And yeah, really not much to be done. Jonah still wants to go for it. Despite his lack of funds, his physical disadvantages. In the B, mate. You're such a wordsmith, Mitch. Such a wordsmith. Turn out. And honestly, yeah, I was about to say, this is just not enough utility to recommit into this. Plus the cash on hand, like you mentioned. Why have Peter just going to save and look maybe an exit off of Jonah 6? But... I thought just kind of watching Physic make his way up with the opportunity for him to pull a recon dart and a hunter stream, maybe they'd give it a go, but not to be at all. So just the one rifle salvaged, and we'll consider here in round number eight if that was worth it or not. Yeah, pretty lackluster. A few rounds yeah, for YFPs that have been cobbled together. I like the idea. As soon as they get guns in their hand, right, they have the Sova just hold from Cubby to push up in mid there from Penny, who really just wants to you make this crunch happen. But Zeldris breaks both halves of that crunch and yeah i don't know yeah they really just sort of give that round away i like yp trying to take initiative there but it ends up putting them at a disadvantage yeah big time and it's just one of those situations that you look at the simple simplest form of uh valorant you go you've got numbers there's no reason to over chow things especially with you know moving across the proverbial 50 yard line but hey i guess on the other side if you win that 1v1 you know, the other side of that conversation is you bottle the offense into one corner of the map. It just felt like it was just unnecessary at that time, especially considering you already had B main controlled. So a bit puzzling to be sure, but this time out likely to figure out what you want to do in this particular round. Because I think honestly, flat out, if you're looking at this down mid, you just keep using it. Like it's just so free right now for YFP. You may as well just keep setting up at least one player to make a quick push through or a walk down, get some catwalk control, make this B main approach a little bit more weary about how it can just focus right on the B main doors itself and just force core to have to spend more through mid map because at the moment it's just wide open for the taking yeah and again you can hold it with an operator but you're not taking that space sure and yeah, if yeah, no yeah. One ever turns up in mid then penny's wasting his time sat there at sort of top mid holding the angle so you, you want to try and take the risk right clear tiles and then push up catwalk perhaps put some real pressure on from gelato maybe as the attackers spend some time sitting up Look at this setup for the attackers, by the way. I mean, my goodness. Four players here expecting another crunch-esque moment, but instead YFP are lined up in mid. Well, the thing here for core is you have to cover your bases. You cannot just walk into B main. You have to get some information first because of the limited buy. You assume there could be things like a judge in the mix, stingers that could just completely foil you. So that Al drone scouting out one deep through mid is enough for them to know that, okay, we know that the at least the Sova is not playing up close, so we can walk into B main without being revealed, at least not immediately. Knife will confirm that, and then Zeldris is right back through as first blood gets tallied through mid map, and Ziff will follow with another penny getting traded out. Not good news here for YFP on their attempts to try to salvage a thrifty, especially as Ziff continuing to dominate mid map. Yeah, I mean you just don't have the weapon really there. You do stack mid. That's all well and good. But you have two players that died just outside of market there on those stairs, maybe trying to take a double face at the first player coming out of B main. Yeah, uh, the idea is fine, but you only strip one gun from your opponents and th they are max. They are max money at the moment. Uh, you need to find another way here to, to interrupt them. I mean, again, you've got a lot to work with, right? You can, you know, you, you've you got an L command. You've also got that lockdown here defensively. So if you can sort of make an informed decision and get some info early, like you can really get this KJ in a position to shine. Well, I think the thing right now is that YFP just need to put some pressure on the map. I mean, outside of the first couple of rounds where they were getting a little bit peaky and pokey towards B main and kind of the same thing here with Thief lurking over towards A, it just feels like Core are able to just walk and do what they want, which is weird to say because simply put, they haven't had to do much besides just flood sites. So just need more now? restriction here if you're YFP and... Core looked like they very well may go to the teeth of the defensive setup as Jonah's already positioned with all of his utility towards sidewalk. Again, this CT position is very easily shut down by a single. Abs absolutely. Spot. Yeah. 
But this is all playing for retake, though, at the same rate. You've got Hunter's Fury, you got locked down, you've yep. got Null Command. They're just planning on trying to make life difficult on the entry and then having a stack for a quick retake. Well, first objective failed. I wouldn't say anything was remotely difficult about that. Gnarly, though. Spotted here by Physic. Jonah. Mm hmm. Wanders okay. straight into that. That's fine. Spike just a tickle planted. these days. That ability. So, okay, we are in retake mode here. Okay, Anna's Fury from the attacking side here. So, again, Corp want to kind of know what the setup is like for YFP here. And Zip sees far too many players. He has to pull out. Attacking lockdown. We'll buy some more of a buffer. More time yep. here for Corp to set up. Yeah, this little extra. Yep, I was about to say this extra push forward could catch YFP off guard. And it does. Two for Snarly. Maybe a chance for the recovery on the KO if Jonah can find the kills, but he gets taken One down and wow, wow, the smoke spam just taps, finds the kill. And man, that is just not My clean from YFP. Not. I hate to put it that plainly, but I mean, you needed to use that lockdown or that Hunter's Fury just to counter out the lockdown. I, it just doesn't. I, I uh, that's that's frustrating. Yeah, I, I, you know, physics, physics pulls it in advance, I assume. Yeah, he does, yeah. Uh, and, it's, and it's just sort of, you're trying to I kind of get some information. So I suppose you're forced to some degree to pop your lockdown there. It's a great opportunity. But that there was a, like a, I had an odd swing from that KO who's like 20 HP on the corner. There was a second play to ensure the trade there, but uh, that was really nice from Snarly. Snarly is extremely, uh, extremely adept here at sort of throwing their, his opponents off kilter. Did that a lot uh, in their last game as well. Definitely one of the, you know, staples for when this team does find success. Who do you look towards? A lot of it does come from them. We spend and, time talking about controllers and, and duelists here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, this this, this challenger stage, minute. this current meta, controllers, that. sentinels, I think, are some of the most important. But you better have an initiator that knows how to confirm their abilities. Otherwise, you're not going to have any hope at finding success in rounds flat out. We have Jonah embedded here in B-Man. Drone here. Contact the swing off drone. Okay. It's a wide swing. I'm going to catch Zeldris here and beautiful. Yeah, Physics knows exactly where he needs to be. And that's beautiful. Trading up there inside B main. Here comes an Alcamando. It's Snarly wants to try and put this to bed. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Penny is there though from market. The smoke is a little bit too late. Yep. Okay. It's way Connection's too late. not being made here, Alan. No, way too late. Paranoia to follow up. Wow. Well done by YFP. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I was looking at it at the beginning the whole way through. Like, here comes the hit. Null Command gets spent. Fragment's there. Surely there's a smoke behind it. Surely there's a smoke behind it. Surely there's a smoke behind it. Because Penny just holds the angle. He just doesn't care. I don't I don't care if I don't if I can't throw a smoke or if I can't dash. I'm just gonna hold this angle with one of the only rifles that was in the round. And you're absolutely right. It just does not get into position in time. And Penny makes the most of it, and it gives YFP a free entry to recontest before the spike can really even make any significant motion onto the site itself. So yeah, that's just all flat out. Penny finding a kill that was way too free of an angle that should have been covered. And characteristic stumble there. For core on that attacking side. And Thief again, this is <laughs> very frustrating to deal with. Is he in wine? Or is he playing that A main? Aldrone will to some degree be able to confirm this. Yes, we're gonna have to TP out of there rather quickly. Mm, and he does. The thing about this is, yeah, I was about to say there's gonna be contact at mid map. The right click misses for Zeldris. Oh no. And Jonah actually gives himself a little bit of separation with the Nano Swarm being popped, so he'll turn that into a second elimination. And Bones to follow up has completely bottled up core. And this is what I wanted to see like four rounds ago. Just use the mid map a bit better. It's being given to you for free if you're YFP. And that's a perfect example of how to do it. I know. They know exactly where Snarly is. T Dog's desperately trying to get to top mid to bail Snarly out, but he is far too late in the day to keep that teammate on the field. And that spike is tucked into the corner here. T Dog looking at the bank. Things are looking fine still for Core after a little run of rounds here, but T Dog would love a little bit of something. Just something to keep your head up with. We'll take that. Physic brought down, but it's another round for YFP. Yeah, and getting five here would feel like a steal away for YFP, considering that the majority of the core rounds have come by way of just five-man floods. So an opportunity to kind of mitigate the damage on the scoreboard here. And the last couple have been pretty darn convincing. Uh, a couple of missteps here for core there, here and there. But I think in this round in particular, if you're YFP, get someone down mid again. Use it as an opportunity to kind of bottle up this core squad. Uh, it looks like instead it's going to be a 3-2 split with all of Jonah's utility being used right on top of the A site. And maybe Bones will get a bit of a bailout here. It looks like they're setting up for a recon dart and a check for Penny on the operator. That's exactly the case. No one home, though. Oh, so they're going to take an extra step forward. I know. Bones 
fully aware of this. The flash is good and Nerve spends the ult for nothing. Crucial round here for Core as well. And do not have the money to be taking undue risks. And that one blows up in Nerve's face. Yeah, big time. Again, it's creative, right? <laughs> we talked about that with Try It on the desk. Like, you're going to see both these two teams try some strange stuff, at least compared to what the average norm is for our most stapled squads. But that one was a bit greedy, to say the least. Ziff also punished. Nice shot from Penny. That's more of like what we kind of came to know from him when he first started breaking into the scene. Knife also will detect a lot of this in the stack for YFP. He's pretty perfect for it. Just need to find a way to trade and you should be fine. Knife is down. Always good for one is Jonah six. But all of them. Zenny Flawless comes up here as we talked a lot about YFP. We're big in him up, but still seven attacking rounds is nothing to Everyone sneer at. Core have done a very good job setting themselves up here. Let's see how airtight this defense looks. Yeah, and that's, I, I think this, again, looking at the round overall, I just wish I would have seen YFP make these adjustments sooner. You know, if, if you're not going to get tested at mid-map at all, use it. And in two of those three rounds, they absolutely do that perfectly. It's Penny in the first case, kind of just getting away with a freebie through market, but never challenged to have to worry about his backside whatsoever. Then the next round after that, it's the quick push through that Bones is able to use really nicely. So definitely a half that will have YFP, maybe wanting a little bit more, but overall correcting and keeping this one manageable. So now we go back into the pistol. And like you mentioned, now it's just down to what does Core want to do in terms of their proactivity? And immediately they're going to get up forward at A main. Early zero point there from Snarly. YFP not really at that level of pace here. So that reveals Power nothing. Out. Bones we should be lining up a flash there. So both jets here on a collision course. We already have the swing coming out from YRP, so they are pulling out of that B main. There was one ping on towards Boathouse, but we've also had T-Dog come and join the defenders in tree. Four players set up here for core on defense. And they're set up perfectly for it, Mitch. You could flash over the top. You could paranoia right down the middle. I mean, Zeldris can just stay here if he wants to. The Not only way yet. he would have to make a move he is if they him. spend utility. He does always oh, detect it, so now he's going to need to get a little bit of help. There's no flash on the way, and he will be isolated for the first. And really, there's no follow. The paranoia comes out too late, honestly, from the side of nerve. So now YFP get entry. The trades go their way, and it'll be a 2v1 to navigate, navigate rather, for Zip. I mean, the pace from YFP was what drew the omen uh, of nerve back into the A site and no longer in a position to double face with the jet that they had left. embedded in wine. At that yep. point, especially once the, the zero point comes in, Zeldris is stuck there. There is no escape, and they don't even prioritize the jet necessarily. No, at some not point, at all. Penny swings in and you know picks him up, but yeah, that goes a little wayward for Core. Well, they, they set up, they let it break apart a little too early based off the slower pace YFP are bringing. It is just Ziff now. Please get the turret. Placing alarm, my bot. alarm bot now down in towards hell, but you know exactly where your opponents are. One in hell. Okay, Ziff made it interesting at the least. Eventually, Jonah, though, puts it to bed. Yeah, I mean, that's a very peculiar setup for Core because I would have thought for sure with having a flash plus a paranoia there and the ability to throw smoke and fragments or whatever have you, that they would have been in a position to bail out in case the knife does come through. But they just say, sorry, Zeldris, good luck. You know, try to go one for one if you can. And the paranoia comes out, doesn't even deter the push into the site. So it's just weirdly timed of if you're going to leave Zeldris out to dry, then leave him out to dry. Save the paranoia to counteract the push. But it's just kind of weirdly used. And that may be the small difference maker that ends up in the pistol round going the way of uh, YFP. No, now on the SFG. earlier, pistol rounds don't matter at all. Well, true, there's that too. <laughs> oh, goodness. Penny here, more than happy to actually just present and be mate. Stronger weaponry, the turret. Snarly, that's a wide angle. Dog Dark could be a problem. Penny able to finish the job, that's T Dog instead. Yeah. Best player for Core in that first half, brought down first. And that's going to lead to more issues here for Core, not just because Snarly's low, but it stretches out your defense with a hard commit back over towards B. Nerve has nothing but a classic. He's going to hear all these footsteps. Again, one would be fine. Knife going to be sent immediately. And actually, the defense is going to get here with numbers. Dark cover is going to get placed. And there's a chance that Nerve can actually come away Ooh. with something here. Snarly took all that damage early in the round. He falls to the volley instantly. Penny's going to be there. Nerve had a decent angle, but that's quite clearable for the attackers. They just dive into the smoke. Without a care in the world, YFP complete that round pretty comfortably here and even up the game. Yeah. 
A couple of missed shots, a couple of missed opportunities, but let's be, let's manage our expectations. We didn't expect that round to go any other way, especially with the defense getting there late, which is classics, but here's where the fun happens. 7-7, seven, seven. that's five rounds in a row for the side of YFP. And a chance to actually do some damage here with this bonus. I mean, the Odin is an issue if they commit to B, I'll tell you that much. I mean, so if they, they can get a read on it, if there's spam that comes out, you got to bail and hard commit either through Catwalk or over towards A-Main, which is already being pressured with Snarly taking an aggressive angle early. They actually might fancy a market push here. They may have to, honestly. All right. Physic now setting up. Might be just be clearing an owl drone there. Our uh, alarm box, excuse me. Zelda's getting embedded, but so he's thinking about it. Surely they don't leave him out to dry this time, Mitch. <laughs> oh, no zero. oh, there's a zero point. You would be one and done, but Eldris holds Five his ground. Feet. Three huge kills. And that really puts Core in a commanding position now. Already the rotate's coming in through mid. Key dog, of course, can standing. check. What a dart. Physic electrocuted. And Thief is all on his own. Yeah, there's just nowhere to go here. Try to make it manageable. One kill comes through, but Zip quick to follow up. Odin will be recovered. And okay, that's what you don't, you just don't let Zeldris <laughs> stay out in an island by himself. Give him just a little bit of help and he'll do stuff like that. Impressive three piece. I mean, why are not really able to overwhelm Zeldris in that position? Kind of taking them one at a time. Zeldris was probably intending for one and a tailwind out, but instead he gets, well, he's eating good in B main, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Reasonable bonus from YP, it's fine. They do know they're still contending with this Odin now. And this might be a tiles crunch. Yep, I've seen this before. This is an EG counter strat. Piles crunch and you try and light up uh, with a recon dart here. And spam in through that wall. Oh, that's exactly the case. The reveal is decent, but the collection's not there. It's Nerf who stepped forward into mid that gets taken care of. And now all of a sudden, you know the Odin's playing over towards mid at Catwalk. And you can reset up here if you're YFP. No chance to quick burst on anything. There's still a couple of defenders on the outsides of the map to keep that honest. But... All things told, that's a perfect exchange for YFP who can now break through with the Null Command if they can find an entry. Zeldris again. An issue in this position. He's got place that corner. The crosshair Brothers. wasn't where it needed to be, but Zeldris strafes his crosshair into position. What? This is frustrating. I, the Null Command afterwards doesn't really get much efficacy. Zeldris is already alive. The defense is already in place. And they're not finding the isolation at all. How is Zeldris still up? I mean... I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. The Null Command just felt like a forced issue. Like, it was supposed to be part of the play, so we'll make it part of the play. But YFP have to collect the spike and work this 2v3 without any map positioning, plus an Odin that can still spam them out. Your odds of getting out of the B side here are nil. Yes. Here comes the plan now. Thief wants to hold this close market angle. He dogs very low, but not showing himself there in CT. And well handled by Court. Three players there with three different angles covered. Thief with no options. And now Bones has to hope for some... Yeah, man. Some economic damage, but that was a bit average. YFP slumping these last couple of rounds big time. Yeah, and it's just... I Again, the whole precipice of that hit was supposed to be the Null Command first and foremost, but once the first kill drops and you lose Penny, that Null Command's efficacy goes through the floor. I mean, because you don't have the ability to burst on towards sight. I mean, the Odin was already in position. Sure, it maybe didn't necessarily connect, but... All things told, Cordis don't really care too much that the Null Command gets spent because no one has to be worried about Penny's dashing because he's already gone. So there's no real immediate follow-up off of it. I'm sure there's a couple of information gathering tools that YFP can confirm for free, but I mean, as simply put, Zeldris gets the first and then immediately gets back into sight to find a second because he doesn't have to worry about dashing away after that. I don't know. A little saucy, I'm not gonna lie. That's very sussy, brother. <laughs> we do have a bit of um, a, a bit of a mid emphasis here from, from Core now. Be expecting like like a, a crazed run up mid into market with some of these short range weapons. Mm. There's no way you're unhinged enough to push that strike. <laughs> okay. Some of that can't get you to the tree there. On the alarm bot alerts all of this. Seldris, there it is. Just follows up. Yeah, not unhinged, but I was gonna say I don't I don't put any bets on what Zeldris does or doesn't do at this point in my career. I've seen too many crazy things out of this guy. It took his time to be fair. Found a found a great window to completely disrupt YFP. One enemy remaining. So I mean, 
We need to start Strike look at looking ahead mid. to the rest of these YP attacking rounds. Bear in mind, like they only come out of the half with five defending oh. rounds. That's already not a great footing to Correct. have yourself yep. on. Yep. But some of these B pushes, for lack of a better word, have been maladroit. Getting very much like disrupted midway through, like we're seeing spikes dropped over towards CT. Zeldris mm -hmm. with a variation of aggressive off angles in B main. Always good for, you know, one or three, depending on how he's feeling that round. Yeah, this is definitely time for a timeout. You cannot run yep. into a brick wall on another side here. Yeah, the blender's been built, right? I mean, the Odin has been an issue now for a handful of rounds, and it looks like for the most part, YFP have kind of like, I won't say over-respected it, but they're very aware of that threat and they're trying to avoid it. But now you've got the operator out as well for the side of core. So that those two tools are available and will allow an opportunity for core to heavy stack one side or the other with the other three members that are not holding on to the big weapon. So this is a problematic part of the map here for YFP. This is one of those that the blunder has been built and the avalanche is close to being forced as a starter just to cross pollinate metaphors. So uh, this is an important round for YFP, not just because of the threats that are on board, but they need to start establishing some well thought out trends like you mentioned. Again, they managed to handle that sort of previous piles crush pretty well. That would have sort of fight Zeldris off as he sort of dove upon them from mid. So they are like they, they are very adept at adapting to a lot of this sort of off the wall stuff. But we'll see yeah. an operator here in the hands of Zeldris. So this might change the calculus a little bit. Just right. a passive from heaven style, a very sort of Zekin esque. Right, take a shot ridiculously somehow to able to find one even while the util comes in. Well, the interesting part here is that there's an aggressive angle for Snarly. That paranoia alerts everything. The fragment at his feet. Zeldris has to hit here because the threat is already at the front doors. He's seeing the location of the Omen TP. Shot. Spike able to get out. Some rest, but on the right side of heaven anyway. Thief going into the back line. But that's the shorty going to work. Zeldris cuts him down to size and then picks up a rifle and goes to business. Another 3k for Zeldris here is Physic. Has looked on with dismay while his teammates fall like flies. I mean, that's freaking stupid. <laughs> That was about as good as it gets for YFP to enter. You get the teleport off. You get the opener from the front. You take care of the KO pretty quickly, That's considering that it was a gut check nice. reaction to Fragment at your feet. But Penny... Well, not Penny, pardon me. It's Zeldris with the shorty to get one, and then the quick exchange from Op to Vandal to find two more. Ay, that's, yeah, that's not fun. And once again, we're finding ourselves on these maps that, you know, we labeled at the pre-match talking about how this could very well be a, an indication of where our duelists are. A lot will rely on the Jets, and we've got a great showing on one side and a pretty miserable one on the other. Get out of my way. Yeah, we haven't talked about it much. Penny has Have been not. quiet. Again, on defense, couple operator rounds where he's forced into rather uncomfortable Ooh. angles. Depression there means Zeldris has to use his two legs and a heartbeat to cross. He does. Here comes the... Ooh, interesting. This is for market control. Okay. Well, the thing is, man, yeah, this doesn't really give Core an idea in terms of where the heck's coming from. It could still come through market, so we're going to have to react to this one pretty gut-checkedly. Oh. And Starly gets two. What? Oh, my goodness. It goes from bad to worse this quick. Starly on for the potential ace, and he wants it through the fragment, but T-Dog beats him to the punch. I mean... That Killjoy all creates so Next much concern because Core doesn't know if that's a hit through market or a hit over through tree, but Snarly just steps in towards A main and just wins the round flat out. I mean, even though Penny is just hurtling at him from tree, knives out, ready to go. Let's see how this played out. Yeah, Penny obviously spots Zip here. Snarly knows what's coming. Man, that's dominant. Really good on that A main. Oh, man. I mean, you'd love to see uh, build another null command as well. I mean, Core also have a lockdown and a very critical round now. Obviously, not mirroring in that previous one after Jonah dropped his. So, I'll be looking to close out the game here. This is not going the way I thought it would. No, and it's just in such a curious way, right? Like, YFP, good collection of a couple of rounds at the end of the first half. Decent ideas being showcased here, but flat out there are just some individuals who are just calling game right now for core and like i always kind of like to frame up and i think a lot of the community sees it as soon as there's an operator and odin online for the defense it just feels like you're battling uphill so heavily as an offensive player and at least there's a couple of extra resources here the hunter's fury in particular for yfp but they need to preemptively use this you cannot save it for a post plant you have to use this to open up one of these two sites you save it for the lockdown I don't know. I think, I think you need to enter with it. Yeah. Let's see if Physic has the same idea. 
Hit dog to tree. Okay, just one player peeking at a time, apparently, but Jonah is able to trade that out. Delta with the operator, though, finding another. And there it is. My goodness, what an ignoble end to YFP's ascent map. Very, very average. Looks in those last couple of rounds. Is, I mean, I've got to be honest, core look incredible. We talked about Snarly before the game. We highlighted him as an initiator that has an outsized impact over his team's performance. And Zeldris had a great map, uh, you know, on that jet. Picking up the op when necessary, but just in general. Yep. These really aggressive off angles, even when suppressed and not able to dash away. Still good for three and B main more than once. Yeah, and that's just, again, special players making special plays. You know, that's just the way it goes flat out. And uh, it's just... When YFP kind of gives up mid control, I think in the first half, I was like, ooh, I, I really hope that's not going to be the case here in their second half on offense, but just not a lot of great looks in terms of diversifying their approach and their hit. I mean, did they even really get more than maybe two spike plants? Did they even get one spike plant on that on that second half? Uh, it just kind of goes to show that the execution, I mean, the fact that we don't know for sure it, it says enough in terms of Core's ability just to restrict any forward motion at all. And YFP just not really able to provide any kind of stretch to the defense, especially when you get the operator in the Odin in hand, things just get too comfortable uh, for core by the end of that half. I mean, when you have Op and Odin, you probably just don't want to have to play retake at all. So you play Correct. forward There's that you know, too. and really like try and take contact on the extremities, punish teams that are not sort of flashing in around every corner and clearing it. Here's your first map though, core, take it away. YFP, a little sluggish on ascent. Plenty of opportunity though to pick up the pace as we head into our second map after this. Peace. 